All right, all right, all right. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bag Girl Podcast. And we say bag because we talk about securing the bag, okay? So today we are going to talk about money, mindset, manifestation with a very, very special guest. Okay. Okay, Mr. Levante in the (laughs) building. He's going to talk to us about credit and... I want to know certain things about this topic because let me tell you, I am new. I'm very new to this, right? Mm. I'm a novice when it comes to credit. I hear about it all the time in the business world. We're supposed to be using other people's money. And I know you specifically specialize in consumer laws and all these things. So you're going to have to break it down like I'm new. Okay? okay? I got you. I got you. Okay. So tell the people about you and everything. All right, cool. So for those of you that are hearing my voice for the first time or you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Doreen DeLevante. I'm a consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer laws. I also teach credit repair business owners how to scale their credit repair business to make an extra six figures in their business using four key principles, lead generation, lead conversion, client ascension, and continuity. Those four can scale any business. I'm also the president and CEO of the Credit Summit, which is the biggest credit summit in the nation, black-owned, where we teach families, credit repair business owners, and individuals how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit, how to normalize financial literacy conversations in the home, how we pass on that information to the next generation so they don't make the mistakes that we did, but most importantly, how to change your credit scores of the zip codes that we are in. It is so important that we improve the credit scores in our zip codes because of the access and the type of lifestyle you want to live. So the if you notice that our communities that have the 500 credit score zip codes, you see a few things on every block. You see a payday loan, a check cash in place, fast food restaurants everywhere, mm-hmm. right? And these subprime lenders. So, well, why are they there? Because they know that people with bad credit normally pay double interest rates or pay twice or even three times the same amount versus our counterparts that have good and great credit. Because if you go to an 800 or a 750 um, community or a zip code, you're not going to find check cash in places there. You're not going to find fast food restaurants there. You're not going to find these payday loans there. They're not there. Mm-hmm. So we need to get these people out of our communities. And it's the, reasons, uh, it's the reason why I created the Credit Summit. So we, we need to change the information. Hosea 4.6 says, my people are destroyed because of a lack of information. Mm-hmm. Well, if that is true, the opposite is also true. If my people become empowered with information, they will not be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole driving force behind all of this. I love it. I love it. So let's start at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So we hear a lot about credit. You know, I'm 24 years old and no one really taught me about credit and like how to use credit and why it's important Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We just say, you know, get a credit card, Mm -hmm. you go to school, you go to college and people just hand you credit cards and Mm -hmm. loans and all kinds of things. But then you get into it and then you look and you're like, oh, this is how this stuff works. Like it's a lot going on. But it's planned. Yeah. I, I want you to look at it this way. Bad credit makes the most money it sounds crazy Mm -hmm. but it does Mm -hmm. good credit doesn't make a lot of money Mm -hmm. for the system bad credit does why because when you have bad credit what they charge higher interest rates Mm -hmm. that's number one number two when a person gets denied they go pull their credit an average three to six more times every time it's pulled somebody got to pay for it Mm -hmm. right um the third thing is when there's a finance charge involved, 15 U.S.C. 1605, mm-hmm. the definition of a finance charge, there's an insurance policy built in to the finance charge where if the obligor defaults, the creditor gets full payment. Mm-hmm. So they get paid from an insurance that's built into it. So whether you default or not, they're still getting paid. And all those payments that were made, they still got it. Plus, if they took the down payment. Mm-hmm. Then it gets sold to collection. Mm -hmm. Then it gets charged off and they get a tax break. Mm -hmm. Bad credit is one of the biggest businesses in America. So by by 
if we control the education of a population, if we control how a population think, we can control what they do, mm-hmm. right? Rothschild, mm-hmm. if I control the world's finances, I care not what its leaders do. Mm-hmm. So if we miseducate the population, we control the population, right? We tell them go to school and get a job, but then we're not realizing that school really is the biggest scam because where else do you go and pay $200,000, $100,000 for a degree, right, a piece of paper, and this isn't me coming after nobody with no degrees, <laughs> right? I got a high school diploma. I'm good. <laughs> I'm a dropout, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I got a high school diploma. I'm good. But um, you go pay 100000 for a degree that you're only making $40,000 a year. Make it make sense. Right? And <laughs> then, not only that, even if you go bankrupt, you cannot file or put the student loans in bankruptcy. Mm. The, isn't that concerning? It's really concerning. So so now it's like they tell us to go to school and get a job. Okay, go to school and get a job, but no one is still teaching about the most important thing, finances and credit. And how to make that money move. Right? So now you go to college. You've never had credit cards. You just got introduced to credit cards. Oh, I can just swipe this and I don't have to think about it. <laughs> but then you never paid it, and then three years, four years later you come out, you have collections. Mm-hmm. You got charge-offs. You got late payments. Mm-hmm. So now you are already behind the eight ball. Now you just got pushed back. So more because if you know nothing about credit, it's going to take you a while to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And this is why the credit summit is so important because we have to change this type of narrative mm-hmm. where our kids are leaving high school, going to college, and don't know anything about credit. Like, It starts in the home, and we cannot leave it up to somebody else to come and save us when we have the people and the resources to save ourselves. I know a lot of people who've had, like, horror stories with credit, and not even just because they were spending it bad. Sometimes it was even their parents that Mm -hmm. would literally utilize their credit before the child even knew anything about Mm -hmm. it and would ruin their credit Mm -hmm. before they even had a chance to fix Mm -hmm. it. But we hear a lot of the horror stories and the negative sides of credit and debt and how that's like a bad thing, right? Like Mm -hmm. debt is bad and stuff like that. But what are the actual benefits and power of other people's money? And how can we use credit to leverage that in business? Okay, cool. So that's a great question. But before we get to that one, let's go back to the real factor of what's happening in the homes, which you just brought up, with moms and dads using their kids' information to get um, Verizon accounts or or cell phone bills or, or wireless services or electricity. Like, these things happen. They do happen. A lot. Right? And it happens because they were not educated on how to use credit. Mm-hmm. And it also happens because... Not only weren't they educated, they don't know that if there's items on their credit, they can also delete these items. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that if they send out a dispute and it comes back verified, oh, that's the end of it and there's nothing I can do about it because of a term that is only known or it's it's known by a few, right? It's called double speaking. Where, where you are able to say something, but you mean something else. Rich people know about it. Government know about it. So, like, for example, the word credit bureau. When you hear that, what do you think? Something official. Official, right? <laughs> yeah. A government agency. Yeah. But these companies that everybody call credit bureaus, they are not credit bureaus. Like Experian and They are not. Union? Credit bureaus do not exist. It's not something that exists. What do you mean? You want to bet? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't exist? It doesn't exist. So Congress, in the definition, 15 U.S.C. 1681A, consumer reporting agencies, mm. a credit bureau does not exist. It is not defined in law. Mm. There is no such thing as a credit bureau. Mm. What happened was some smart person <laughs> did the research and found out the power of words. Mm-hmm. And what they did was they associated themselves with a particular word that people know mean a particular thing. Mm-hmm. So subconscious marketing is marketing of the psychology. It, it, it's, 
It's marketing of the mind. I am going to penetrate your psyche mm-hmm. through words. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word became flesh. Mm-hmm. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm-hmm. Words are extremely powerful. So if we master words and we use words to confuse the population for them to think that we are something that we are not, mm-hmm. it now gives us an innate power so you're saying they're not backed by the government? No, I can prove it. Really? I'm willing to put up a thousand dollars right now. <laughs> That's so weird. This whole time I was you thinking, wanna, it's like you want me to blow your mind? Yeah. Would you like me to stroke your mind right now? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get it. So take your phone out. Mm-hmm. All right, I want you to go to 15 USC 1681. 15. Hold on a second. 15 USC 1681. It's going to bring in congressional findings. Okay. Mm-hmm. And declaration of purpose, right? Mm-hmm. All right. I want you to read that for me. At the top? All of it. It's not long. Okay. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a blow your whole mind right now. Accuracy and fairness of credit reporting. The, go- the Congress makes the following findings. Number one, the banking system is dependent upon fair and accurate credit reporting. All right. So let's break it down as we go. Okay. The banking system is dependent upon fair and accurate credit reporting. Mm-hmm. So do you think that Congress will allow these corporations to furnish inaccurate information on your credit and not give the consumer the right to fix it? No. The banking system is dependent upon fair and accurate credit reporting. Yeah. It's essential for accuracy and fairness for the banking system to, pr- to survive. Mm-hmm. But somehow they figured out how to take that away from people by asserting themselves as an authority that they're not. Number hmm. two. <laughs> okay. Inaccurate credit reports directly impair the efficiency of the banking system and unfair credit reporting methods undermine the public confidence, which is essential to the continued functioning of the banking system. What do 90% of people have? Bank accounts, right? Yeah. And when they get paid, those funds get deposited in the bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And because of fractional reserve lending, banks are able to take the money that you deposit and lend it out 10 times. So if uh, what if, if there's a run on the bank, oh. and everybody pulls their funds from the bank, it's all going. The down. banking system collapses. Yeah, it's all going down. Correct. <laughs> and that what happened before with like the depressions and stuff. S- some t- to some extent, yeah. people went back to demand their money. Their money wasn't there. Oh. Well, where did it go? Where did it go? The banks lend it out. That's what happened. It was not there. Mm. It's number three. Okay. The an elaborate mechanism has been developed for investigating and evaluating the credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, and general reputation of consumers. I want you to read that again. An elaborate mechanism has been developed for investigating and evaluating the credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, and general repu- reputation of con- consumers. Now, if the government created these agencies... Would the government or Congress call them an elaborate mechanism? No, they wouldn't. No, that doesn't. So an elaborate mechanism has been created. They created themselves. But I want you to read the next one, which is just going to blow your whole mind now. Okay. Consumer reporting agencies have assumed a vital assumed. Huh. (laughs) Now it's coming. Okay, keep, keep it going. I see the light bulb now. (laughs) <laughs> have assumed a vital role in assembling and evaluating consumer credit and other information on consumers. Assumed? What does that mean? It means that this title, this role that they have was not given or assigned to them. They assumed a role. And with this role, they now have control over the way information gets reported who on consumer. It? TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, in a vis- stage you stream. said they get to like, assume something. <laughs> but that this is the game. Mm, okay. So when you see and when you wake up from the matrix, you now realize that number one, they are not government entities. Mm-hmm. They have no association with the government. Mm-hmm. They are not credit bureaus. Don't exist. Where do they come from? 
It's a made-up word. Mm -hmm. Consumer reporting agencies exist because of what they do, which Congress just tells us. Mm -hmm. But a credit bureau does not exist. What they did was, when we hear the word bureau, we automatically think government agency. Mm -hmm. So they use the word credit, which they do, which is they, they accumulate your information, they assemble the information, and they furnish it to what? to get approval for credit or insurance or employment or other things. So they use the most popular words. The most mm -hmm. popular one would be credit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take credit and then we're going to take bureau and we're going to put them together. And mm -hmm. then now we're going to institute actors. We're going to institute people insert these words into the minds of institutions and have this misinformation now spread. Mm. So now the misinformation has spread about them being a credit bureau so everybody and their mama and grandmama believe they are credit bureaus <laughs> because that's what grandma said. Grandma said the credit bureaus did this. Mama said the credit bureaus did this. So now we started passing down misinformation. Mm -hmm. So now not only one, but two and three generations now have been brainwashed to believe an entity exists that does not exist. According to the government. No, according to themselves. Mm. Because they are not government agencies. Mm. But they have used a government word to associate themselves. So psychologically now, we associate them with being a government agency. So then what power do they really have? None. <laughs> really? They are data... They are data they're that, they are data collectors. They collect information about consumers and they resell it. Oh, consumer reporting. There you go. <laughs> now, now it makes sense, right? Yeah. No credit bureaus. They don't exist. Wow. That's just like, it makes me think about things differently. It does. So then where does the concept of credit come from and who are these people that decided to just assume the role so the consumer putting agencies assume the role right mm -hmm. but then you got to keep in mind that they're also in bed with the banks oh. right because now the banks need a way to gauge people's level of approvability mm -hmm. so so what's the risk associated with you they needed a way to 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 view this data so the consumer put an agency's job is to go gather the information, right? More than just money that's in your Correct. account. Correct. So they, they go gather the information. They go gather about your payment histories. They go gather about where you live. They're fishing from information from everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So then another company called FICO, Fear Isaacs Corporation, mm -hmm. saw that there was a gap. The information was there. The banks needed it. But how do we quantify that information into a scale mm -hmm. that makes it so easy that we now become the dominant role in this industry. Which is your credit which score. Which is your credit score. Okay. So FICO now created an algorithm mm -hmm. or a risk score model algorithm that takes the information from your consumer report, mm -hmm. puts it in the algorithm, and on a scale of 300 to 850, mm. which is 550 points, they came up with the credit scoring model that has five basic parts. Payment history, mm. utilization, age of credit, new credit, and mixture of credit. Five categories. Mm -hmm. Those five categories on a scale of 300 to 850 gives you 550 points, with 300 being the absolute worst. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot lend to these people, they won't pay you back. 850, they'll pay you back. Mm -hmm. They'll borrow more loans. They'll do more stuff. Mm -hmm. So now they quantify that information into numbers, and banks now can use those numbers to, to assess whether to extend credit to you or not. Right, so the banks and FICO are in kind of like a collaboration. They're all in bed together because they all now make money. So FICO made the algorithm. The algorithm gets licensed now to Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, and all the consumer reporting agencies mm -hmm. to produce the score. Mm -hmm. Depending on what model of FICO is being used, the bank now says, hey, okay, 
we're using this model. This model gives us the score. Mm -hmm. Based on what we're looking for, we can use the score to extend credit to you. But there are categories now where interest rates are concerned, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're 740 and above, you're, a bit, you're like 5% or lower. Mm -hmm. If you're like 680 to like 720 or something like that, well, we'll give you like between 6 to 8%. Okay. But the lower you go on the credit score chart, mm -hmm. the higher the interest rate So goes. do most people have good, bad credit or average credit in general? Well, every nine out of ten people have some inaccurate information on their credit, right? Okay. So think of it this way. There's 334 million people in America. Mm -hmm. About 65%, which is about 195 million or something like that, mm -hmm. live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. So if you live paycheck to paycheck, what else do we know is true about people that live paycheck to paycheck? I know because it happened to me. I live mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck for many years. I would have late payments mm -hmm. because I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying some accounts, so they went into collection. Mm -hmm. I got charge off. So you see how it fosters a cycle? Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're not making enough. Mm -hmm. So if an emergency or something you didn't plan for mm -hmm. ever came up, some bills aren't being paid. Yeah. I heard, like, you know, they say most people in America can't afford a $400 random charge. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, but it goes back to the system that we were led to believe. Go to school, get a job, work for 40 years, retire in 40% of your income. It's the biggest garbage ever preached. Yeah. But everybody believes it mm -hmm. and believe that working hard is the way to success. You will never get rich working hard. It's not going to happen. You got to do that smart work. <laughs> you got to be smart. Yeah. And smart don't mean you being the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. It means you solving other people's problem and hiring people smarter than you to fix those problems. Leverage. Leverage other people's education. Yes, yes. And I, was, I saw one of your old, older interviews and you were talking about the idea from going like one to one versus one to many mm. and being able to use that in that kind of way. Yeah, so that, that's a great analogy as well. So when we, when we talk about business models, let's talk about scalability. Yeah. The more you scale, the more money you'll make. Like mm -hmm. if you offer a service, you can only do so much. There's only so much time in a day. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing one-on-one -on -one consultations for an hour, you are very limited to the amount of people you can consult with per day. Yeah. But if you change the business model to a coaching program, mm -hmm. you can do that same one hour, mm -hmm. you could talk to 10 people on a Zoom, you could talk to 100, you could talk to 1,000, you could talk to a million. Mm -hmm. So the <laughs> impact now is more. Yeah. The value now is more. Your rates just went up because now instead of one person paying you $200 an hour, I had 1,000 people paying me 200 an hour. Mm -hmm. What was the math between the two? So while you only made 200, Remember, I got a high school diploma, guy. so <laughs> let, let me go do the calculation. Listen. I have 200 times 1,000, right? Yeah. 200,000. Some of them are saying, during this 200,000, I know, but I got to <laughs> do it for the person in the back of the room, <laughs> right? So so, so 200,000 for that same hour that somebody got pay, paid, paid $200. $200 for. Yeah. That's how you become rich. It is not about working hard. Oh, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do 10 consultations for the day. Good luck. Mm -mm. I'm going to do one Zoom for $200 with a 1,000 people on. Mm -hmm. Use volume. The volume game, we talk about that a lot here on my channel. Like okay. How to get more money for mm -hmm. your time because we believe in slowing down, chilling more, not having to always be in the constant state of hustle and hustle and hustle mm -hmm. and grind in order to get the results you want. So, so when it comes to time... A lot of people believe time is money, right? A lot of people, I hear it all the time. And it's one of the biggest lies ever told. And um, What is more valuable to you? Time. All right. So, here's my own water. All right. Uh. <laughs> all right. So, let's say, I go in my bag, right? 
Mm-hmm. Spend some money, but I still got to do that. Okay, you just right? pop it out with the cash. And <laughs> I give you all of this, right? Mm-hmm. But there's a condition. Mm-hmm. The condition is that you will die after you use it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm giving you everything I got. Well, I'll tell you what, let's give you access to one of my bank accounts. Mm-hmm. I'll give you the passcode to one of my <laughs> bank accounts, along with the username and everything, right? Um, that probably has probably about 200000 in there. Mm-hmm. And that is yours. But tomorrow morning, you have to take your life. Mm-mm. So, the money's there. You ain't even gonna spend it. The money's there, <laughs> but tomorrow you don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you really think time is equal to money? It's not. Yeah. So, we've learned and we've been programmed to look one way where we go trade our most prized possession, our time. For somebody's little bit of money. Mm -hmm. When if we use our time wisely, develop ourselves, develop our business, we can use money to buy time back by hiring people to do the things we don't want to do. So Mm -hmm. we we redeem our time to go spend it with the ones we love, Mm -hmm. to go do the things we love, to go travel the world, to go gain new experiences. To start more businesses. Mm-hmm. What do you love? I love starting businesses. I love making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I love making a lot of money. So, yeah. yeah I, I'm very good at business. Yeah? Yeah. Talk about other people's money. What is the power of other people's money in a healthy way? Okay. So the power of other people's money is the fact that if you were broke like me, I was broke like a joke and ready to choke, all right? <laughs> I was broke, broke. It's like it's like broke with all letters bold, <laughs> right? And learning about credit really set me financially free. I own like seven businesses now, right? Mm. And when we talk about leverage, well, credit, is the ultimate hack. Mm-hmm. Cuz if you were poor like me, right? I was I was pitifully poor, mm-hmm. right? And I learned a skill called credit. And then I specialized in consumer law. Mm-hmm. And I was able to use that leverage credit other people's money cuz it wasn't mine cuz I had none mm-hmm. to create assets that mm-hmm. cash flows. Mhm. So as these cash flow and assets increases, my wealth increases, the amount of money that I got increases. But guess what? I can still go borrow from the banks, which is other people's money, Mm -hmm. because we spoke about fractional reserve lending, right? Mm -hmm. How we can borrow other people's money, (laughs) use it to create wealth, give the money back, and still retain the asset. Double and flip it. (laughs) That's the whole game. Yeah. That's the game. But people... Want to go access funds, but then they buy liabilities. Yeah. Well, who do you think is going to pay for that? You are. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like people want things, but they're doing it incorrectly. So they will go get a whole, like, all right, I just got a check for like $56,000, right? Okay. And that check, what would you do with 56000 It was like two or three weeks ago. What would you do with it? Figure out a way to make a move. Define a move. What does a move mean? Put it in some form of a business. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the average person would do with $56,000 right now? It just came in the mail. Spend it. What would they do with (laughs) $56,000? It's like the lottery. They would the lottery least start spending it all. You know what I did? What? I bought an automatic car wash. Really? Two units. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So now $56,000 will make me millions of dollars. I think that's really important, though, because one thing I notice with, like, the credit people and the people are like, you can build credit. One thing I don't hear them talk about enough is, like, 
What do you do when you get the credit? What do you do when you actually fix your credit and get that all in order? But there's a lot of people in the credit game right now. They make money and they spend it. Some of them don't have businesses. Some of them don't have other streams of income. Yeah. Some of them are living their best life, buying Lamborghinis and all of this stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. I, mm. I would want me a Lamborghini, not a not the car. I want a Urus because that things too small <laughs> i'm a big dude i yeah i, I don't like I, I i don't like small cars i don't, I don't. that's the lambo truck right yeah i, I want me okay. a urus a red and black one that's me right okay there. red and yeah, black that's, I see, that's I me see. right there all day <laughs> right so i'm not saying that i'm not gonna have nice things but for mm -hmm. me to have a urus i need to create something that's gonna pay for it i refuse to pay for it i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not paying for it so i'm gonna take this fifty six thousand. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm gonna go buy me some car wash. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use the cash flow to go buy my Lambo. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying for it. Mm -hmm. I refuse to pay for things. So everything that you're putting money into or paying for, liability. whatever liability I want. And then you could rent out that Lambo if you wanted to if make I money on it as to. well. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like. The difference of what makes a person rich is just the way we think about things. Mm. That is why for a person to become wealthy, the first thing that needs to get fixed is your mindset. Yes. The way you think, the way you think about money, the way you think about wealth, the way you think will affect all your future mm -hmm. earnings. All right, Grand Cordon. They stripped him of his name. They stripped him of his title. He couldn't use any of his contacts. The Discovery Channel dropped him somewhere in the back of the woods. Yeah. Right? Like With no place. money and a truck. I don't even know if he had gas. Yeah. I don't think he had gas. Yeah. Right? And in 90 days, built a $5 million business. Mindset. It is not money that makes a person rich or wealthy. It is what is here. Mm -hmm. And I can tell a lot by coming to your house. Mm -hmm. See, if I come into your house and I see big screen TVs anywhere and no library, I already know you're broken poor. What if it's on their phone? What? Their books. What books? Books and stuff on their phone. Which rich people you see have books on their phones? Yeah, they have audiobooks. Mm -hmm. But every rich person know you need a library. Yeah. This that's a given. Mm -hmm. The information you consume, you're consuming somebody's life. When you consume a book, you consume a person's life. Mm -hmm. Their experience is what they did and the roadmap to their success. Mm -hmm. So the more you consume and the more you execute, mm -hmm. the more you will potentially get to your destination faster, right? Mm -hmm. So... If rich people barely have TVs but an extensive library, yeah. poor people got a lot of liabilities. They got Xbox, they got TVs, they got all of these distractions. Mm -hmm. But then when you ask them about a book, they can't <laughs> even tell you one book they've ever read. Mm -hmm. The average CEO reads about 54 books per year. Mm -hmm. Average CEO. So what does the exceptional CEO does? Double the amount. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we consume twice as more. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. When I got deployed in Kuwait in 2020, I read 140 books that year. How? I was consuming 8 to 12 books per month. Okay. I was reading a book a day. Wow. I was consuming information. Mm -hmm. I had to restructure my mind. Mm -hmm. Because your mind is your greatest asset. 100%. As a man think it in his heart, so is he. Okay, okay, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. So <laughs> what do we do if we want to change the output of something? An output is a result, yeah. right? So everybody is self-made. Only the rich will admit it. Every decision that you've ever made in your entire life up to this point puts you where you are right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're broke, you've only made broke choices. If you are poor, you didn't make self-development and rich decisions and choices. Yeah. 
because the environments that we are in often shape the mindset. Not every time, often shapes the mindset of what it produces. Mm -hmm. Because if you know people from a certain region, they all speak the same way. Mm -hmm. Most of them, not all, will carry themselves the same way. Mm -hmm. They will eat the same stuff. They will do everything the same way. Mm -hmm. So it is true that if your environment is a poor environment that does not foster wealth and growth, change your environment. The poor get poorer and the rich get richer. Yes. Because that's what you surround yourself with. You are an Unless average. Unless you like break yourself out of it. <laughs> you are an average of the five people you associate with. Yeah. So if that is true, why would I want to hang around with losers? To become the next one? Or do I want to learn and develop myself so I can start hanging around rich people so I become the next one? You got to do what you got to do. It's a matter of perspective. Mm -hmm. But oh, money isn't everything. <laughs> Really? So remind me why you go to work for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, for 40 years. Please, if money is so evil, please remind me how you prostitute your time Ooh. for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, for 40 years, if money is and everything. <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know who you're trying to lie to. It ain't me, though. They got it in it. It's, I think it's a coping mechanism because they don't want to actually face. The fact that facts. working hard is, is bullshit. Yeah. It is. Mm. You don't work hard. The hardest working people don't make the most money. All right, let's look at it. Let's use a hotel, for example, right? Mm. The hardest workers in the hotel is the cleaning staff. Right, they make all the beds. People party. People throw up. People have stuff everywhere. <laughs> right, dirty towels. They are the hardest workers in that building. Yeah, but they probably make the least amount of money. Yeah, above them would be the managers, which manages them, and above the managers would be the general manager, which something like that, or the region director, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But as you know, as you go to the top, the less work that person has to do. Mm -hmm. The or person the at the thing. extreme top is the smart person mm -hmm. that put all of this together and then put people in places to make this thing work. So it's almost like management and kind of directing and stuff like that Correct. makes the most money. The highest level of intelligence or the highest level of learning or the, yeah, let's use that, imagination. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine something, imagination gives people the ability to take a trip to the future. Mm -hmm. See what could be. Come back to the present and build a road to that future. And we all have this thing called imagination, but what are the average people using their imagination for? Thinking is the hardest thing most people will never do. Yeah, because they're so busy surviving. And distracted. Yeah. Or like trying to numb themselves from reality. Escapism. But to speak to that person, though, who's like literally in it, like they're broke, they're Credit is bad. They're like in a place where they're like, I don't know what to do. Where does that person start to start getting their life in exactly where they want it to go? Buy a book. First thing. Yeah. And if I was to give anybody any advice, if I was to give myself advice is, dude, start sooner. Buy a book. Yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. Buy a book. Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. Go to my YouTube channel, Doreen Delevante, D A. R A I N E, excuse me, D E L E V A N T E. Go to my YouTube channel and I want you to go in isolation for a week. Mm -hmm. Why? You have to develop yourself. Be ye renowned through a new mind. It is not the movement of the clock mm -hmm. that starts the newness of life, it's the movement in your mind. We must protect our mind. Mm -hmm. As a man 
thinketh in his heart, so is he. The things you think about manifest in your life. So if you start manifesting wealth, you're going to have questions about wealth. You're going to seek answers about wealth. Mm -hmm. It starts with credit. Mm -hmm. Go to my YouTube channel. My content, my free content on YouTube is better than people's paid courses. Mm -hmm. Go to YouTube. It is free. YouTube hasn't started charging yet. It is free. Go to my YouTube channel and binge watch the content. Mm -hmm. Start applying the information now in your life. And you're going to see that you're going to learn how to repair, rebuild, restore your own credit. Mm -hmm. Before, after that, then you're going to learn how to do your mama, your auntie, your uncle, your sister, your brother. You start with your family. But guess what? Your family won't make you rich. They probably won't even believe in you. They're going to say, oh, why are you on the range channel? Who do you think you are thinking about? You're going to fix my credit. They are the naysayers. It's okay. It's a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. You're going to have books. Oh, why are you reading that dumb book? For the same reason you're dumb because you're poor and I don't want to be poor anymore. That's why I'm reading the book. So thank you very much and get out of my way. <laughs> right? Like we got a responsibility. Yeah. Accountability. Mm -hmm. We have to own the fact that we are broke right now and we are poor because of the decisions we have made. Mm -hmm. So if that is true, if I start making rich decisions, I'm going to be rich. Mm -hmm. It starts with education. It starts with self-development. It starts with renewing your mind. You need to lose your mind and gain a new one. Mm -hmm. Because through a new mind, you have new possibilities. You have new beliefs. And just like right now, you just read it. Mm -hmm. So now you know through your own education, nobody can tell you anything that a credit bureau exists because you can prove them wrong. You know for a fact mm -hmm. they don't exist. You know for a fact they weren't appointed. You know for a fact they assume a role. Mm -hmm. You know for a fact that your credit report must be accurate. Mm -hmm. Nobody can ever take that information away from you. These are things you now know that is facts. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you read it yourself. <laughs> yes. One little thing, though. That's how does me. one get started? Like, How does one get started with fixing their credit? Okay. So the way a person starts with fixing their credit is realizing that the problem is me. Yeah. So until I take responsibility, nothing's going to happen. So after you've taken responsibility, you want to go over to my YouTube channel, like I said before, and I have videos over there breaking down credit, breaking it down to, to the level where a third grade can understand it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm breaking down the factors of FICO, the five factors of FICO, the payment history utilizations, age of credit, mixture of credit, new credit. I'm proving to people that late payments don't exist. Late payments are illegal. I'm proving to people that you don't have to pay collections, charge-offs, how you can delete a bankruptcy in four days. Like I'm giving all the information out. Mm -hmm. But if a person is not willing to change their mind, if a person is not willing to say enough is enough, if a person is not willing to say, I am tired of this bad credit and poor life, nothing will happen. So until they make the shift in their mind, nothing else will happen. Okay, okay. So making that decision and it's making the first decision part. to get educated. That's what led to my success. Yeah. Making a decision that I refuse to live paycheck to paycheck anymore. Over with, we're done. I'm done with it. <laughs> like, do you know what it is to be on the top floor of a five star hotel overlooking the entire city where every minute the staff is checking on you saying, hey, do you need anything? Can I get you a hot towel? Could I get you a robe? Could I do this? Could I do... Like, the, those type of experience is amazing. Mm. Some people will never get to experience that. Y'all know what it's like being inside of a Lamborghini or a Mercedes-Benz AMG or, or a, 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 a Rolls Royce or, like, Guys, the life is out there. The abundance is out there. Just and guess what? Safe and secure and at peace. Bruh. Don't no worry. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. I don't have to worry about buying something. I'm not looking at the tag. I'm not going to say I'm going to overindulge because I'm not. Got 
gotta be responsible. You gotta be responsible. But the mere fact that I don't have to go look for discount stores, yeah. I just I want something, I go and get it. Okay. And I don't have to worry about a price tag that's attached to it. Mm. It's a different type of feeling. All right. Two of my friends, um, well, one, got in an accident. She got hurt really bad, really, really bad, right? Mm. And she won't be working for at least two to three months. Mm. She's out for at least two to three months. Everybody that's hearing this right now, put be in position in the chat. In the, in, in, the, in the chat, drop that in the chat. Be in position. Mm-hmm. So I I called my friend's sister and I said, "Hey, tell me what her monthly bills add up to, right? Because I don't want you worrying about how you're gonna make your how your kids are gonna eat how." You're going to buy supplies for you. How you are going to do this? How you are going to do that? What is your total for the month? And I said, don't tell her why you're asking. Just give me the answer. Mm-hmm. I went to the bank. I drew a few thousands. And I brought it there. They didn't even know that I'm bringing it. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want you not to focus on paying your bills for the first 30 days of your recovery. Focus on recovering, Mm. right? Focus on recovering. When the next month hits, we'll figure that part out. But at least this first month, I don't want you to focus on paying bills because that's going to take away from your recovery, Mm -hmm. right? I was able to say, Mom, I'm not going to send you any money anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a business that you can use to buy whatever you wanted to do. That's it right there. Right? That's it I right told there. my mom, I'm not sending you any more money. Yeah. Give me a business. I'll fund the business. I'll start the business. Yes. I'll buy what needs to get by. So you have cash flow to buy whatever you want. And that's <laughs> entrepreneurial maturity. I see so many entrepreneurs, especially men, they like make a lot of money. And then all of a sudden they're like constantly paying their family stuff. And no, stuff I'm like not. That. I'm not the one. Yeah. I am not the one. I'm not the one. Put them in the position to succeed. (laughs) That's it. That is me. Mm -hmm. That's how I think. Yeah. So my brother was asking me for money. I'm like, no, I'm not giving it to you. What I'm going to tell you is this. I'm going to start this business. You operate it. Mom owns the business. You get paid. She gets paid. I just solved two problems. And you're training them how to think and how to operate and how to actually work for themselves and to be for themselves as well so they're not just dependent solely on you. Correct. It's important. So it's important. And, and I, say, I said this on, on, um, on Rich and Unemployed, and people thought I was crazy, that, like, say we're together, right? Mm-hmm. And you want, let's say, a Birkin bag, right? Mm-hmm. We know those prices are like, what, 25, 30 grand, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it makes sense for me to just give you thirty thousand. Mm. Let's use that thirty thousand to create something that you can buy not only one Birkin but ten Birkins. That's but people get at me. Oh, all she wanted was a <laughs> Gucci bag because of your limited mindset. <laughs> How about we use those funds to create a stream of income that can buy ten more Gucci bags? Twenty five. Twenty five. So guess what? You never have to ask me for another Gucci bag ever again. I don't like when you ask me for stuff. Let's find a solution to whatever you want to ask me for, right? (laughs) Let's find that solution. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying if we're together, I'm not going to buy you stuff. I will. Yeah, but the holidays. But if I know there's things you're going to want, well, I'm going to create streams of income to pay for those. Mm -hmm. Less things I got to deal with. (laughs) You do whatever you want to (laughs) do. Like, that, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. It might not make sense to everybody else, but mm-hmm. that's not my problem. That's did y'all's you, problem. Did you always have that mindset as an entrepreneur? Or did nope. you have to learn that? Nope. I had to make this. This person that's talking to you, I, have, I had to make this person. Mm-hmm. I started making this person in 2019. Mm. That's why I read 140 books. I needed a new mind i needed to lose the 40 40 40 mind 
40 hours a week for 40 years on 40% of your income. I needed to kill that person. Mm. YouTube, this is figuratively speaking. Don't take what I'm saying <laughs> and saying the rain is putting up hate crime. <laughs> I'm not. I'm talking about a story. Yeah. All right? That character had to die yeah. for a new person to be born. Mm -hmm. And this new person looks at the world with a different vision. Mm -hmm. I look through a different lens. I see things other people don't see. And that is what? That has led to my success. What is next in your vision? A lot. I'm creating uh, um, an AI tech company. Mm -hmm. I'm building out a few softwares. My food truck is up and running. I need a few more. I need 10 more. Where? In Atlanta. Oh, okay. Right? i um, about to start um, an event because I went to an event. It's like a day party. And I was expecting something else when I went there and I got disappointed. When I'm disappointed, I create what I got disappointed about. So I solve my own problem. <laughs> and it, it solves other people's problems. So I'm, I'm about to... To venture in 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 a in, a, in something new, mm -hmm. where I'm bringing my culture, um, West Indian food, to to Atlanta on a, a like a a brunch type of vibe, mm -hmm. where people are able to come experience different food trucks, different things, and and have a, an amazing time. Okay. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I went to one. I got disappointed, so I'm going to create. <laughs> Why was it disappointing? Because. Um, Food service there was trash. Uh, like the like the actual service and like customer service and stuff yeah, like that? Everything about the food was trash. <laughs> Every, everything about the food was trash. <laughs> so I, I, when I get disappointed, I get creative. Uh -huh. And I'm going to make my own. Um, <laughs> doing real estate. Real estate's going to happen this year. Do you uh, know how to chef it up? I do. Oh, okay. Do. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, car washes. Uh -huh. I'm going to buy a lot more automatic car wash. Yeah. It's going to make a lot of money. A lot. What is a lot? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> so I'm putting the car wash in Jamaica, right? Yeah. There's very few automatic car washes in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So this is called first movers advantage. Being there first and monopolizing the industry. One unit is projected to make 14 million Jamaican per year mm -hmm. two units mm -hmm. are going to make 28 million so if i have a hundred units it's a lot of money, it's a lot of money. <laughs> okay so okay. as the profits increases mm -hmm. the profits gets reinvested back into more units okay so at the end of next year i want 10 units so 10 unit. no i no i gotta do the numbers. bring out the bring right? out that calculator. <laughs> so if i'm having 10 units 10 units times 10 units times 14 million <laughs> a lot of okay it's a lot of zero what is that like how how much is that that's 140 million oh wow no i mean like in, is that usd or not no so all you got to do now is divide this by 150 Okay. And you will get the U.S. equivalent, which is 933000 Okay, that's what's up, though. Mm -hmm. And then I bet that kind of makes a lot of opportunities for even people in Absolutely. over there. Absolutely, creating more jobs, creating more. And, like, I, one of my things is um, I want to build schools back home. It's mm -hmm. one of my projects. Um, the primary school that I went to, I want to tear it all down and rebuild it. Mm -hmm. I want to build it where student have, students have access to information technology, um, an, an extensive library, a good library, mm -hmm. um, giving them vocational options to develop skills, coding, technology, different things that right now are relevant. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to do that. And okay. If I had that when I was growing up, I'm telling you all, <laughs> it would be a lot different. It would have been a lot different. Yeah. So that's that's what I want to do. Yeah, that's what I want to do. What about in your personal life as well? Um, personal. <laughs> 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 so I love. I really love what I do. Um, yeah. I want. I want a few kids. I would like to have uh, six. 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 Yeah. I got one now, so I need five more. 
Okay. Um, because I'm not. What, what am I going to be doing with all of this money? I'm not giving <laughs> it to the government. Yeah. Right. So we're creating generational wealth for the next four generations. Mm-hmm. So just like what the Rockefellers did, that's the business model I want to use. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to create significant wealth and then pass on that wealth tax free to the next generation with instructions on how to use the wealth so that they can build more. And poverty stops with me, and it doesn't get transferred anywhere else. Okay. So kids, family, love. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Philanthropy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to build stuff. I like creating. So I'm very creative because we were all made in the image and likeness of a creator. Mm-hmm. So that means, by default, I am also creative. Yeah. We're all creative, but only a few people will tap into their creativity mm-hmm. because they got blindsided by a job which just keeps them over broke mm-hmm. and they're not excelling at their full potential. So you're becoming a, well, you are a business and money artist. <laughs> Picasso. Yeah, <laughs> the money Picasso, <laughs> period. Yeah, so um, it's, it's all about vision. Yeah. A lot of people can see, but a lot of people don't have vision. Mm-hmm. And, and also make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Bring it, bringing it to life. Yeah. So, that, that's what I'm working on now. And as I grow and I learn more, I'm quite sure there will be a lot more. My team is having a hard time keeping up with me. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a team of 17. Oh, wow. And they, they are having a very hard time keeping up with me. Yeah. I am so creative. Yeah. And it comes so naturally. Like, I can build businesses on the spot. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, yeah. I am blessed. And I thank God every day for giving me a mind of wisdom and understanding just mm-hmm. like solomon mm-hmm. everything else will fall into place mm-hmm. you don't have to give me money i don't want it god just give me wisdom and understanding mm-hmm. and i'll take care of the rest do you believe in destiny i believe you create your own mm-hmm. i think i believe in both so so the destiny of a person is just like a coin it could go on either side. Mm. But just like a person believes that, how many sides do you believe a coin has? <laughs> Two. You sure? Well, yes. How much are you willing to put on it? What do you mean? There's one if, side if you, and the other if side. If you are sure in your conviction. And maybe like how, the small How much side. are you willing to put <laughs> right now that a coin has two sides? I'm willing to put up $4,000. How many sides the coin has? Three. How? Are you going to take me up or not? I can't give you that information. (laughs) Are you willing to bet on your two sides? It's not that. I'm very confident in what I say. Go ahead. And I like to prove what I say. (laughs) I'll bet a penny. (laughs) So now the question becomes, are you going to match my 4,000? No. (laughs) So you don't believe a coin has two sides then? Three? Yes, it has three. Heads, the tails, and the edge. Well, yeah. Well, is it one? Okay, it's one edge. Three sides. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I live life on the edge. I see opposing beliefs, mm. and I look at them, and then I make my own choice. Okay. It's okay. never heads or tails. There's a third option. Mm-hmm. So you don't believe that certain people, though, they have a certain energy, a certain bloodline, like a certain just like they came here to change things. Like, and that was just like kind of just what it was. Well, you can look at it that way. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it that way. Yeah. But there's also people like me that weren't born into riches, that weren't born into royalty, that weren't born into some of these um, high class families. But because of what is innately in you, you decide that I will no longer be a victim of my environment. I'm going to go create my own environment. Mm. There are people like me. So people like me won't fit that because I wasn't born into it. Yeah. So, so whether it's you destiny or not. Something. You have yes, something. Yes, but that something can also be developed. Yeah. Right? Some people are born with it. You are a million percent correct. But that can also be developed because Mm -hmm. when I was a child, even though I knew I was different in the way I thought about things, I wasn't business orientated. Yeah, that's a skill set. Right? So now I developed something which supercharged something else that was already inside. Mm -hmm. So it can be developed. The question is, it goes back to the mindset. 
a lot of people are not willing to go through some stuff to get to their stuff. Yeah, delay Because when the pain hits them, they want to duck. They want to run. The pain of failing. The pain of not getting what you want. The pain of trial and error. The pain, the pain, the pain. Well, the pain is going to come anyway. Mm -hmm. The pain of being broke. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather deal with the pain of being rich. Mm -hmm. I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini <laughs> or a Rolls Royce <laughs> than to be smiling in a Toyota Prius. I'm just, <laughs> these are my facts. You're going to cry. We're going to smile in the Lambo <laughs> too. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I've been broke. Mm -hmm. I've lived paycheck to paycheck. I've walked in the rain to work. I've mm -hmm. walked in five feet of snow to work. And I would be willing to bet even, like, from, like, American broke and even looking at, like, different places and stuff like they that. They don't know broke it's here. It's a different kind it's of It's a level. different type of broke. Yeah. The thing with people in America is they're in the picture too much, so they can't see the frame. Yeah. They cannot see the frame because they're in the picture. They don't know how good they have it here. Yeah. And until you leave this damn place and go to other countries and really see and experience poverty, you don't know what it's like. But guess what? I have been there, so I know what I know. And when I am grinding, don't tell me to slow the fuck down because <laughs> I'm not. Mm. I've been poor. Mm. I know what it's like. I refuse to go back there. Have I changed? Absolutely, yes. I ain't worked this hard to be broke again. Y'all must be out of your damn mind. He said what he said, period. <laughs> period. I refuse to go back being broke. I'm not doing it. Do you feel, like, comfortable? Like, do you feel? No. Comfort is the killer of dreams. When you get comfortable, you get complacent. Your mm -hmm. hunger is not the same. Mm -hmm. So comfort. Do you purposely make yourself uncomfortable? Yes. Mm -hmm. It keeps me sharp. It keeps me going. Mm -hmm. I have my things with that. Well, it it depends that. on what our goals are at the end. Of yeah. What if you just like to lifestyle. do stuff because it's fun? N nothing's wrong with and that. And you enjoy it. And nothing is wrong with that either. And you're it's passionate just, about it. Sometimes passion don't pay the bills, and sometimes love <laughs> don't pay the bills. <laughs> sometimes we got to do shit that we don't like to get yeah. what we need. It's a law of reciprocity. What are you willing to give to get what you want? Mm -hmm. You got to give something. Mm -hmm. But people want something for nothing. It doesn't work like that. I think that's the difference between, like, even if you are in love with something, it has to come with a certain level of discipline. Yes, Discipline yeah. is the formula for success. Because mm -hmm. even on days when I don't like it, I do it like I love it anyway. Yeah. Shout out to Mike Tyson. That was a whole bar. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Okay. Flew here. Got here at 2 in the morning. Had to be up by 8 for a 10-hour class. Masterminded. Back at it again. About to leave here to catch a flight, doing this podcast, get back home, straight to the barbershop, because I'm looking a little crusty right now, <laughs> right? Straight to the barbershop. <laughs> From the barbershop, I got a podcast at 7.30, and then I have another one at 9.30. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. But then, when you have all the things now that you've acquired, people be like, oh, you can say that because you're rich. No, I work for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't working hard it was working smart mm -hmm. and being disciplined and focused and showing up even showing when you don't up want to doing it like you love it even if you don't mm -hmm. and shout out to mr golden <laughs> <laughs> tampa <laughs> yeah myron is the goat myron's my dude yeah I, myron has changed my whole life yeah. and i know a lot of people say it but it's true and that's the power of mentorship yeah it's the shortcut to success. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why people refuse to acknowledge that you need mentors in your life. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear, oh, it's a scam. No, you're a scam. That's why you're broke. <laughs> Somebody already scammed you. I'm too late. <laughs> You've already been scammed. That's why you are broke. That's, that's a boy. School did it to you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You paid all this money for a degree only to make $40,000 a year? Dude, I do that in a day. Mm-hmm. And I got a high school diploma. Wow. That's a bar. So we're getting our information from two different places. It's different to go straight to the source versus like putting all your time into something where you don't even get the actual information that you need, where you literally could learn directly from somebody who's doing the exact thing that you want to do. Nope. It's for a fraction of the money most school, of the time. Get a job, get a dog, get a house, put rainbow colors all over your fucking place. Let's <laughs> teach our kids garbage. Let's tell them that bad credit is okay. Let's send them to the subprime lenders. It's a cycle. Yeah. When do we break that cycle? And you learn from doing. You learn from doing. Yeah. You learn from mentors. Yeah. School will not teach you how to be rich. That is a fact. Yeah. School will teach you how to be a worker. Mm-hmm. School will not teach you how to be rich. Mm. Unless you want to be like a lawyer or a doctor. There's a lot of lawyers that are not rich. Yeah. There's a lot of doctors that are not rich. I got a high school diploma. I make more than lawyers and doctors. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with being a lawyer. Nothing's wrong with being a doctor. But there's two types. Mm-hmm. There are doctors and there are business owners that are doctors. Yeah. It's two totally different people. Even they need to make their money move. And the business owner that is a doctor will make 10 times more than a regular doctor. That is a fact. Learning the skills that are really making money, no matter what job you're in, no matter where you are, you need to learn how to make money. Absolutely. You need to control your income. And if we learned anything from COVID, y'all need to understand and comprehend one stream of income is not enough. Mm -mm. At a minimum, you need 10 streams. 10. When does a person decide, like, okay, how much money do you make before you make another stream? <laughs> With me. <laughs> All right. So if there's more than 100000 in any of my bank accounts, I get nervous. I don't like it. What? I don't. It mm. needs to be spent. Really? Yes. It needs to be spent by either starting a new business or getting an asset that can produce cash flow. The banks are lending my money out at 15, 18, 26%. They're paying me 0.05% mm. to have my. Who's being scammed here? <laughs> You're taking my stuff, yeah. lending it out. You're making 50 times more than what you are paying me. Yeah. Obviously, I'm on the short end of the stick. So what does the banks do? Well, Doreen, if you want to know, we invest in things and people that we can get a return on. Thank you very much. It means I need to do the same with my money. Money is not even really money. You really should it's put money tool. into an asset. You need assets. Yeah. They print it. Don't save money. That's, that's dumb. Mm-hmm. That's dumb as a box of rocks. Yeah. You can't save what they are printing. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you this. They print significantly more than you can save. Mm -hmm. so why not use this currency why not use this quote-unquote money to go buy assets to increase your net worth yeah to produce cash flow yeah because the greatest expense you will ever pay life well there's two the second one is taxes (laughs) yeah (laughs) You know what the first one is? Sip that water. Get hydrated. (laughs) The greatest expense you will ever pay, it's called the ignorance tax that you pay life. Mm. See, I thought it was impossible to make a million dollars. Shit, I even thought it was unheard of to make a hundred thousand. Then I learned to do it in a day. Mm. And let's just say for easy numbers, what does the average person make? Maybe like 40, 50,000. Let's use 50, right? We'll say they make Mm 50,000. And do you think the average person will ever accumulate a million dollars in your life? No. 
So there's people like myself that teaches you how to leverage credit, that mm -hmm. teaches you how to start your own credit repair business, that teaches you how to repair, rebuild, restore anything on your credit, that teaches you business principles and how to scale businesses. And we did over a million dollars last year, mm -hmm. right? And we're on track to probably do three or four this year. Period. Right? <laughs> and this isn't to brag to anybody because I, I really don't care what you, you think. I don't with care what you think. Money. And if you're uncomfortable about my light, I ain't going to dim my light for your darkness. So we're going to be clear on that. Get inspired. <laughs> don't be triggered. You need to be inspired by what I'm about to tell you. Mm -hmm. The average person makes, let's say, 50000 right? Yeah. They paid life last year 950000 for not knowing how to make a million dollars. But that was last year. What about the year before that? Maybe. The year before Maybe. that? Maybe. And the year before <laughs> that? This is what you are paying life. Not learning how to make money, create generational wealth, fix your credit, and set your family up for success. Yeah. And I feel like... We have this beautiful life and we're gifted this life and we somehow got here out of like we could have been anything. We might as well make this life as amazing and crazy as it possibly could be. Not everybody. It's a gift. Many are called and few are chosen. Yeah. Not everybody wants to wake up from the matrix. I don't know why. You can have fun if you really do it. Not everybody wants to wake up. I think there's freedom. Freedom really is the most valuable thing for me. But freedom means something else for you than it does for the other person. Freedom doesn't mean the same for everybody. What do you mean by that? Different people have different definition of what freedom means to them. The same way different people have different definitions of what wealth means to them. Mm -hmm. So freedom for you might be to, for you to be financially free where you never have to worry about anything else and you can travel the world but for some people, just having a job and working 40 hours a week, they feel that that is freedom. Getting a degree <laughs> to hang on a wall and boast about, oh, I have a degree, that's their accomplishment. People have different goals, and I've learned this. Not everybody wants what I want, and I want massive success, and I thought everybody would want it, but I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Some people, some people, aim too low and hit than to aim so high that if they miss the moon, they land among the stars. Mm -hmm. People just don't think big enough. And usually it's because they think they can't do it. People believe whatever excuse they want to believe to keep mm -hmm. themselves as a victim to stay in the environment that they're in. Yeah. Which is They'll make up an excuse, but I'm going to tell you this. You will not have excuses and results in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. They don't exist together. No, no, no. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things, all right. So I wrote an ebook, right? Mm -hmm. And the ebook teaches people how I built out an 800 credit score three times in one year. And the ebook on my website is for $147. Mm -hmm. But for $47 here right now, if you are watching this, you can get it for $47, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, for every 10 people that watch this, probably one person will get the ebook. Mm -hmm. And then the same nine that didn't get it, they're going to complain and mourn about how life is unfair to them and they made no effort to put themselves in position. Mm -hmm. So all they have to do is text the word FICO, F I C O, text the word FICO to 917 993 5238. That's it. And I'll send you the link for them to use it. Yes. And I'm, I'm willing to bet that there are people on here watching that have bad credit yeah. but refuse to spend $47 on their own education. They rather go to the club and buy a drink with it, which does nothing for them. Yeah, but it's all about programming. Yeah. They've been programmed through the television mm. about Rich people are greedy. Bad eagles. Death, <laughs> that, that is bad. Yeah. 
that is not bad. There's people that became billionaires and multi-billionaires using debt. The information you have about using debt, that is what's bad. There we go. The education but that you no have. One, it's e- see, it's easy for me to blame you mm-hmm. and say what you say don't work mm-hmm. than to be accountable and say, damn, you know, I've been messing up. It's time for me to get my shit together. And what actions do I actually have to take? But it's so easier to blame you. Yeah. Why would I blame myself and hold myself accountable if I can blame you? We're all self-made. Yeah. You gotta look in the mirror at the end of the day. You Michael do said it best. Do. I'm talking about the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people, they're not willing to face their own fears. Yeah, you gotta do what you have to do, y'all. If you are scared, scare money don't make money. It doesn't. You gotta be willing to take a risk and to just start Try something new mm-hmm. and just go for it. And even when you do get the information, actually like utilize it every single day, even when you don't feel like it, even when you start to run out of that steam. So mm-hmm. thank you so much. No problem. No problem. So <laughs> I hope they got something from this episode. Yeah. I hope y'all got a lot. Yeah. Because until you realize that you're the problem, you won't be able to get a solution. Yes. If you are the problem, you're also the solution what a solution okay period come on <laughs> high thank you so much for coming you're and very supporting welcome. and for being here i feel like this definitely set up a lot of light balls in people's minds you definitely did for me well i'm a very lot happy. of reminders and stuff I'm like that i, I feel like that. i'm about to go home and be like <laughs> <laughs> let's get to work let's get to work even more <laughs> i'm very happy yeah but tell them where to find you and everything ah. so um for you guys, depending on when this air, if it's possible and we can air this before the 29th, that would be dope. Yeah. Because they can come and find me at the Credit Summit. It's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Like I said in the beginning, we are teaching consumers. We are teaching people. We are teaching credit repair business owners. We're teaching families how to change their credit score mm-hmm. from these 500s and 600 to seven and eight. We are teaching you how to delete negative items from your credit. The cool thing about the summit is when they come there, they're getting their reports printed. Mm -hmm. Some people have never seen their consumer reports. It's being printed. You're going to look at it. You're coming there to work. Don't think you're going to come there to get motivated. No. You're coming there to work because I need you educated. So when you leave, the conversation in your homes are different. Mm Mm-hmm. Why y'all keep dating people with bad credit? <laughs> you got bad credit. She got bad credit. Y'all can't even get an apartment. That don't make women. sense. Yeah, and the, my audience is primarily women, and I feel like a lot of women, we don't even look at our finances. We're just kind of like, oh, you know, whatever. You know, it's just kind of whatever. Yeah, like, because people are being, think like, they're being programmed right now. Oh, he needs to have a big, ID and all of this stuff. Well, all right, he's going to have a big deal with bad credit, and <laughs> both of y'all are stuck. <laughs> Now what? You're both on the air, my trust. Oh, congratulations. You got a big... Yeah, now you're both stuck with bad credit. Does he have a good mindset? Congratulations. A big mindset. So what I'm saying is, if you know... And people overlook the power of potential. Yeah. Right? If you're with somebody right now and, and their credit and their finances is not where they're at, it's cool. Like, your current situation does not define your reality. Your current credit situation does not define your financial reality. What does that mean? It means that let's go to work. Yeah. Baby, I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to go learn this credit stuff. So I'm going to get you right. I'm going to get me right. Yeah. We're going to leverage personal credit. We're going to leverage business credit. We're going to create cash flow in streams of incomes. Mm-hmm. Y'all trying to lead. I'm going to need y'all to be financially literate, too, Okay. Period. Period. I'll be (laughs) focusing on the wrong things, man. Yeah. Y'all are focused on the wrong things. So, oh, back to where you can find me. See, (laughs) I got side. So, you can find me at the Credit Summit. That's thecreditsummit.com. Go there. Beat me there. Don't meet me there. Wait, it's the other way. Meet me there. (laughs) Y'all know what I mean. Go to thecreditsummit.com, right? Um, On Instagram, I'm Doreen DeLevante, D A R A I N E. D E L E V A N T E. Um, go to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm everywhere. Doreen Delevante. Once you type that in, it will pull up everything. Um, if you got bad credit right now, 
All you got to do is text the word FICO, F-I-C-O, to 917-993-5238. Get the book. Get the book. <laughs> start repairing your own credit. For $47, you can start repairing your own credit. Just go ahead. Yeah. And um, if you want to talk to me, come to the summit. And, um, yeah, there's a lot more. But I need you all to take the first step. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to just give you all of this stuff and then... You get like analysis paralysis and oh my god, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Start with the ebook, forty seven dollars. Go over to the YouTube channel. I got content for days. I will keep you up at night. <laughs> that is a promise. <laughs> right? And then you will see how your life starts changing. There you go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, so I love it. I love <laughs> it. But also, this episode was brought to you guys by Rich Goddess Club, my online community where you can find courses, classes on financial literacy, spirituality, seduction, romance, and all the things that women can use to just get to that next level in their life. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Wait, so we're talking about the Rich Goddess Community got finances. Yeah. Seduction. Yes. Tell me some more. <laughs> Spirituality. Tell me some more. Spirituality. Every aspect of a woman's life to really mm. focus on to go to the next level. You're intriguing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, y'all. Shout out to the club. Okay. Yo, shout out to y'all. Um, <laughs> a man's greatest asset is his partner. Yes. Y'all women, shout out to y'all. Yes. Because y'all keep us balanced. Yes. And y'all keep us focused. And y'all have the ability to speak life into us. Yeah. So shout out to the Rich Goddess Club. I mean, are guys invited? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes? Yeah. I'd, I'd like to be invited. Come on, come right, to the Goddess Club. I, I'd like to be invited <laughs> sometime. Let me know. Listen, it's a lot. If you get around us, you know, you're going to start, your heart going to open. Really? Yeah. I would love to be there. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> he put on the voice for y'all. He said, oh, I would like to know. Let like me know. Figure. we're gonna figure it out (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much again absolutely welcome hope you enjoyed yourself while you're Mm -hmm. in tampa it was amazing and yeah i'll talk to you soon let's get it yes (laughs) (laughs) thank you bye